how to start your own work from home business. Welcome back. I'm Ted Thomas and I've been involved in a home business for decades. To start with, I would suggest you take inventory of your skill set. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, maybe you already have a professional degree, or maybe you have a skill that you were trained as a craftsman, or maybe you developed ex expertise as a journeyman or a master. Maybe you're a carpenter, a plumber, a masonry contractor, or any one of, of hundreds of jobs that require a craft. Now, if you're one of those things, what part of that could you transfer to being a work from home business. So think about that. Now, I'm sure you're getting the idea, but many skills and professions are transferable and you could be, go from being an employee to a self-employed startup business from home. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. How to start your own home business. That's the subject of, of our case history today. Now maybe you've already have a profession or a degree or a skill and you've been doing something else. And that's perfectly okay. The big thing that you really want to know is can you transfer it and be able to do the same job from home? Now, if you can't do that and it's not, not something that's clearly transferable, you're going to have to get trained. Now, it's not complicated to be in business. Actually, it's very simple to be in business. All you have to do is provide a product or a service that people want and you're going to be able to work from home in your own business. So I like to tell people, work is work, pleasure is pleasure. Work doesn't necessarily, it isn't necessarily glamorous. A lot of people want to say, do what you like. And now that's really, really working out for people that want to be an artist or they want to be a person that, that molds things, want to be whatever. Uh, that really works for them because they like what they're doing. But most of us don't get that opportunity. Most of us really have to work every day. So I'm going to say to you, Try to do something that you like, but certainly do something that's going to make significant amount of money. And most things that aren't glamorous make a lot more money than the fun parts of being a business. So I say work is work. The work I'm going to suggest for you is definitely not glamorous. All right. So what do you need? Well, you need a little office at home. All right. Now, where's that office going to be? Well, it would be nice if you could have a little sanctuary that was away from everybody else, but you certainly don't want to be next to where they're playing basketball or people are watching the football games or whatever. You need a quiet place to work. So that's all you need. One desk, a telephone or whatever. Doesn't have to be fancy to get started with. Now, the internet has so many jobs out there and people talk about it, how glamorous it is that they can do work in their pajamas. Now, that might sound good, but I don't want to burst your bubble but you're not going to get make a lot of money working in your pajamas. Now, maybe after 10 years of doing it, you can do that. In the real world, when you work at home, it requires a ton of discipline, a lot of concentration, and you've got to be able to focus. And you must be ruthless about working alone and not having your family around. Now, nothing wrong with the family, but they always want to be with you and talking and visiting. How are you going to do your business if that's happening? So you need to be ruthless about your time and you need to be ruthless about having a quiet place to live. All right. Now, I don't know what your skills are, but you're going to have to have some skill that's transferable. So what's today's lesson, of, lesson all about? It's how to start your own work from home business. Now, there's lots of things that are transferable. If, they, if you don't have a transferable skill, well, start getting one. Start learning part time. Start working, working with for someone else. Whatever it takes, you need to get a transferable skill. So figure out how you can solve other people's problems. You need a problem solving product or you need a problem solving service if you're going to help other people out. Now, before you launch that company, you need to research and figure out, is there any competitors in the neighborhood? Is there any competitors, period? Now, if there's no competitors, don't start that business. Just don't do it because there might not be any demand for that business. If no one is already out there competing in the business, then there might not be any demand. So you'd waste your time. If there are competitors, well, then find out what the competitors are doing. Now, I didn't say copy them, but look at what they're doing. Could you do a better job? Could you provide a better service? Could you be, could you be quicker than they are? Could you be less money than they are? You're getting the idea. All right, don't copy them. Do something better than they're doing and you'll have a successful business. But if there is no co competition out there, whatever you do, don't start that business. Now, many people want to start from home. 
All right, if you don't have business experience, why don't you get some by working with somebody else, okay? If you work with other people, you could tell them up front, I'm gonna be there as long until I learn it, and then I wanna do my own. What I'm trying to answer in this particular episode is how to start your own work from home business. So narrow it down. You don't need a fancy office to work from at home. You can work from a desk in the garage if you have to, all right? You don't need a lot of skill, but you need a skill that other people will pay you for. Now, if it's something you like, that's fine. Most business isn't going to be something you like. It's going to be something that isn't glamorous. I tell people, find a business that's difficult to do, not an easy one. Find a hard one. Because once you learn how to do it and make it easy, then it's going to be it's going to be a business that you can do again and again and again, and other people will buy from you because it's not so easy to do. All right, will it be glamorous? Well, I don't know. So I'm going to tell you about some of the things that I do, but you need to know you have to develop crafts, you have to de develop a, prof a profession, you have to have some technical skills that other people don't have, otherwise you've your home business is not going to be very successful. All right, now, let's talk about some of the things I've discovered about business, okay? I've discovered one thing, that if you're working at home, there's a ton of distractions. How are you going to control that? If you want to succeed at home, you've got to be ruthless and be able to focus, concentrate, and be determined that you're going to create a successful business, and you have to do that from your own little work zone at home. I actually call that a sanctuary, for lack of a better name for it. All right, now, many people think self-employed people are not working very hard. I'm going to tell you, freelancers and entrepreneurs, lots of them quit a 40-hour-a-week job and go home and start working 60 hours a week. All right, yes, they're working for themselves, but they're working a lot harder than most people think. Now, I don't know what your goal is. Maybe you want to be like Stephen Jobs. Maybe you want to be like Elon Musk. Maybe you want to be famous. Maybe you want to be rich. I don't know what it is. But I'm going to tell you, it's going to take thousands of hours. Thousands of hours to generate the money that you want to do to become like they're doing. Now, the majority of the people don't make any money. So I'm not sugarcoating being a freelancer, and I'm not sugarcoating being an entrepreneur and working from home. What are you doing about funding? You need to start thinking about that. So there's dozens of ways to make money from home. So I'm going to read off a long list of things that you can do from home. And I'll only read for a few seconds, but there's thousands of things you can do. For example, you could be a blogger. You could be an SEO expert. You could be a freelance writer. You could do business on YouTube. You could be a media consultant. You could be a podcaster. Now, I've made a long list of these. Some people want to be a pay-per-click buyer. Other people want to be a Facebook ad person. Other people want to be web designers. You're getting the idea. You could be a video person. You could be a dropshipper. Oh my God, there's just so many that we can talk about. I didn't want any of those businesses. And what I discovered was a business that was already 200 years old. And that 200 year old business was a subset of real estate. And it meant I could stay in a business I was familiar with. So that subset of real estate turned out to be tax liens and deeds. Now, what is real estate? Well, traditional real estate is homes, it's small office buildings, it's small farms, it's basically residential lots that are vacant and uh, people want to build on them. But people buy and sell those as brokers and agents and attorneys. All right, now, what have you learned? You've learned so far, go out and do something that you really like to do. You learned that from a high school teacher and a college teacher. I'm gonna say, okay, go ahead and do that if you can. That's very good if you're an artist or a mu musician, but most work isn't glamorous and it's work. So if you're gonna be working in something that isn't glamorous and it's work, why not work in something that's gonna make a lot of money? Now, when I say a lot of money, I teach people how to make twenty-five to $50,000 on one deal, but you're gonna to have to learn how to do it. Is it going to come to you in two weeks? No, you're going to have to get yourself trained. Just like I said, if you want to be an entrepreneur or you want to be a freelancer, you're going to have to provide a service or a product that's going to solve other people's problems. So what did I do? Well, I discovered a 200-year-old system where I could buy properties for 10 cents, 20 cents, 30 cents on the dollar. Well, once I knew I could buy that low, what could I sell it for? Well, I could sell it for whatever price I wanted. That means I could make thousands of dollars helping the local government. So now I'm solving their problem. I'm going to buy their properties and I'm buying them 
10, 20, 30 cents on the dollar? What if I sell them for 40 or 50 or 60 cents on the dollar? Sounds crazy? Well, it's going on in all 3,000 counties across the United States, and it's going on every single day. All 3,000 counties are auctioning properties for 10, 20, and 30 cents on the dollar. Now, what does that mean to you? That means the tax assessor will show a value and the county treasurer will sell the property for 60, 70, and 80% less. Now, I thought that was pretty darn exciting. So I bought into that and started to learn how to do it. It's just a subset of the regular real estate business and it's been available for decades. So let me give you an example to kind of close this lesson out. All right, so let's say I find a property and I can buy that property for a low price. Now, what's that low price going to be? It could be 10 cents, 20 cents, 30 cents on the dollar. And when they sell the property, there'll be no mortgage. I can sell it for whatever I want. So what if I bought it for, for 20 cents on the dollar? It still has a value. What if I could sell it for 50 cents on the dollar? That's going to be a profit. Is it a huge profit? Yes, it's a huge profit because there's no mortgage on the property. Now, my name is Ted Thomas. This is a business you should get involved in. Before you do get involved in the business, you want to make sure that you look at those properties you bid on because if you haven't looked at them and you had boots on the ground, what if there was a hurricane the day before? What if there was a windstorm? What if there was a flood? What if it was next to a chicken farm? Folks, don't buy anything that you haven't already had boots on the ground. Ladies, you would not marry the man without looking at him. It's the same thing with real estate. Don't buy it unless you've seen it. I'm Ted Thomas.